Welcome again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, all the way through to chapter 2, verse 5. God chooses the despised and the humble. Verse 17, Paul writes, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the good news, the gospel, not in wisdom of words, so that the cross of Christ wouldn't be made void. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are dying. In other words, if you love your sin, you are dying in your sin. Whether or not you feel good right now, it doesn't matter. If you are in sin, you are in death. And the cross of Christ is foolishness to those who are dying. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, Paul references Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14, quote, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring down the discernment of the discerning to nothing. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the lawyer of this world? Hasn't God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For seeing that in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom didn't know God. When it's talking about the wisdom of the world here, it's talking about the knowledge of the world. It was God's good pleasure through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. I'm going to read this again, quite powerful here. It was God's good pleasure through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. God loves to take the things that are despised, lowly, humble, and put them above the proud, put them above the noblemen of the world, put them above those who are highly esteemed in the world. Verse 22, for Jews ask for signs. Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Greeks. But to those who are called, notice Paul made a very clear distinction here. There are those who are called and those who are not called. To those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God, the foolishness that comes from God, quote unquote foolishness, at least what some people might think is foolish, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brothers, that not many are wise according to the flesh. There is the key phrase here, according to the flesh. Wise according to the flesh means you're wise in the eyes of human beings, in the eyes of the unregenerate population, in the eyes of the world. Not many mighty, not many noble, not many mighty, not many noble are called by God, but God chose the foolish things of the world. Foolish things. This is God's way. This is how he works. He chooses the foolish things of the world that he might put to shame those who are wise. God chose the weak things of the world that he might put to shame the things that are strong. God chose the lowly things of the world and the things that are despised, and the things that don't exist, that he might bring to nothing the things that exist. Think about this for a second. God created the world out of nothing. He created everything out of nothing. But here, Paul says, he takes nothing to bring to nothing the things that exist. That no flesh should boast before God. That's the bottom line that no flesh should boast before God. God hates boasting of the flesh. God hates boasting in the flesh. He hates it. 
The only boasting it says in the scriptures that anybody should do is boasting that you know God, if you indeed really, really know him. Because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who was made to us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24. And that is what I was just referring to. He who boasts, if you're going to be proud about anything, don't be proud about a sinful lifestyle. Don't be proud about anything that you do apart from God. Be proud only if you can truly say that you know God, really know God. And you know what the scripture says? To know him is to obey him. To know him is to obey him fully. To deny yourself. To deny your lusts. To deny your plans. To deny all of your selfish ambitions. And to dive in to the depths of God. Die to yourself and let God take over your life. When I came to you, brothers, I didn't come with excellency of speech. I did not come with excellency of speech. Proclaiming to you the proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined, I determined, this is a key phrase as well. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, for those of you Christians who are just hyper-literal about everything, I mean, hyper-literal, I mean, you know, a lot of Christians, they would just take one verse here and one verse there, like, for God to love the world, and they just, they just completely build a whole theology on one verse instead of actually taking what the total entire scope of Scripture says. For those of you who do that, can you imagine doing that with this verse? St. Paul said, I, when I was among you, I was determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Well, obviously, Paul didn't mean that in a very absolute literal sense because he actually wrote about a lot of things other than the crucifixion of Jesus. And we all know that. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. My speech and my preaching were not in persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith wouldn't stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Where do we see that today? Do we see that today at all in churches? Do we see the demonstration of the Spirit and power? Not words. We're talking about the demonstration of of the Spirit and power. And the most important demonstration of the Spirit and power is the demonstration to change the unchangeable life, to change your life from being a sinner to being a saint, from being someone who is a slave of sin to being someone who is free and someone who obeys God and who is a righteous man or a righteous woman for God. And when you seek God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.